this important debate. Like the member for Hive this week, I had one of those difficult conversations that I'm sure members across the House have had when I saw the reports that the Facebook moderators said that death threats towards members of the public who are in the public realm were acceptable. It never gets easy getting a death threat or a rape threat. I first started getting them in 2013 when I helped the campaigner Caroline Crowdo Perez campaign to put Jane Austen on banknotes. And in the last eight years, the situation has gone from bad to worse. Back then, it felt it was shocking. It was unusual. It was definitely a matter for the police. Now it is all too commonplace. And one of the things that we have to recognise is it is not an equal experience. Women, and particularly women of colour and people from non-binary backgrounds, are especially at risk of being abused online. 82% of women politicians from around the world report experiencing psychological violence. Half of them have had rape or death threats. In the 2017 election, we know that it was women of colour who were MPs who were particularly targeted, receiving 35% more abuse than their white colleagues. My colleague Diane Abbott receiving half of all the abuse online during that election. Little wonder by 2019, many colleagues from the, across the House cited the abuse that they had faced as the reason why they were standing down. It's not just about people in the public domain. It's also about the experience of women and people of colour across our country. And we know that it has got worse during the pandemic, a 50 percent increase in the abuse, according to Glitch, who've been monitoring this. It's not just the words, it's the sheer volume of abuse that you get. And it's not just online anymore, it's including leeching into our offline world. And it's increasingly not just anonymous, as people feel emboldened to abuse because it becomes commonplace. Every year we delay enacting this is every year that we see voices being removed from our public domain. So let's kill the idea this is about free speech. It's not free speech when 50% of the conversation is living in fear of what you might do or being found or is being terrorised. And it's not free speech when we're not hearing those voices, those diversity of voices that improve our debates and our discussions. Mr Deputy Speaker, I started off using kittens to try and take the heat out of conversations. Now I've moved on to capybaras, but the problems in the last eight years have gotten worse. It's been state sponsored, it's organised, and it requires us to come together and to hold the media companies accountable, just as we would hold a pub landlord accountable if we were being abused in a pub, just going about our business. But the online harms bill must recognise the intersectional nature of the issues that we face. It must listen to organisations like Glitch, Hope Not Hate, Joe Cox Foundation, for goodness sake, it must listen to, and when they argue that we must recognise particularly who is being targeted because in a free and fair democracy, we must fight to reclaim not just our streets, but our social media too.